There seems to be an effort underway to bring about ranked choice voting in Illinois, at least for the 2028 presidential primary. We just got done with the 2024 presidential primary. Can they possibly upend the voting system to allow for ranked choice voting by 2028? Back at it, Bishop on Air. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Last week was the final ranked choice voting task force meeting. This task force was rec created last year with appointees on this uh, task force. It's the I think the official term is um, the ranked choice voting and election systems task force, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, long task force name, all right? But there's tons of task forces all throughout Illinois government dealing with all types of things. All right, so this task force met several times. They've got a report they have to give to the General Assembly with the eye of possibly having ranked choice voting for the 2028 presidential election. But there's all kinds of questions that are raised, right? Especially questions about election integrity, uh, the importance of decentralized elections across the state of Illinois, and and so on uh so let's uh let's get into this uh some of the uh conversation you had um reform for illinois there they are a um uh, a group in the states that looks to uh, work towards reforming illinois politics uh and they they also do an, a pretty incredible job of tracking all of the campaign expenditures uh that there are for uh well pff, all of the politics that goes on uh, but um, uh, Elisa Kaplan uh, from Reform Il for Illinois was talking about what she's hearing from people uh, who have uh, experienced uh, the, the ranked choice voting system, which if you're not familiar with ranked choice voting, essentially how it works is you're given a list of the five candidates that are running from all parties. All right. You're given the list of the five candidates and not like a runoff. It's not a runoff. Instead, what it is is you select those five candidates and you rank them all right say you like candidate number three the most then you'd rank candidate number three as the the most likely for you and then you would rank candidate number four as the second most and then candidate number two as the third most and then candidate number four uh however it goes when those votes are tallied if your number one vote doesn't win, then the other votes help support that. I'm given a horrible explanation of it. All right. Imagine, though, if somebody really couldn't explain it that well before an election. How would that how would that treat turn out? How, how would people would would people start feeling apathetic about the elections? Either way, um, some of the, the questions that were raised. Elisa Kaplan with uh, Reform for Illinois talked a bit at the uh, uh, most recent task force hearing about what she's hearing from people on the ground where there is ranked choice voting. At a time when voters are disgusted by the tone of their politics, fostering a healthier campaign environment has never been more important. RCV rewards collaborative candidates who can get broad support rather than those who just excite a narrow base. One candidate in an RCV jurisdiction related how if she saw a lawn sign for a different candidate, she would go to that house and say, hey, I agree with that candidate on that. Will you rank me second? That interaction would only happen in an RCV election. Studies can confirm that RCV encourages candidates to focus more on issues and positive campaigning and less on personal attacks that can turn off voters. Well, again, uh, as they're talking about this, you had this task force uh, hearing from subject matter witnesses, uh, opponents and proponents, uh, previous meetings heard from county clerks across the states that aren't part of the task force talking about the costs and and the uh, the importance of trust in the, the process. Uh, one of the uh, task force members, John Ackerman, I believe he's the Taswell County clerk dealing with county elections because we have 109 different county jurisdictions in Illinois when it comes to elections. I know we have 102 counties, but places like Chicago has their own board of elections either way. You've got all these different counties. Yeah, they have a set standard they have to follow, but you've got all these different counties that are in control. So uh, John uh, Ackerman from Tazewell County, he's asking some questions, especially whether or not studies are showing that people like ranked choice voting. Voters have less confidence in the results that are coming out of our county clerk offices, out of our what the results are. In 2016, we saw one uh, political party that 
claimed Russia hacked the elections and that elections could be electronically uh, attacked. And in 2020, we saw the other political party uh, discredit the election claims as well. Both of them were singing with pretty much the same voice. Um, it's just different times when their individual candidate had lost the election. With ranked choice voting, we would be saying, I can't show you how how you're a candidate won. Please just trust that the computer that's calculating that is doing it correctly. We heard that you could do hand counting, which isn't allowed in the state of Illinois. Um, so, I mean, I guess we could change the legislation, which would drastically, I think, uh, make serious issues with our elections if we allowed random hand counting of our election results. Well, and, and again, you know, this is a county clerk knowledgeable about state law. Uh, and uh, it, it it's not allowed in as far as we have optical scan ballots. We have paper ballots in the state of Illinois, if you didn't know that. If you're voting on an electric screen, well, that spits out a receipt that you're supposed to take, right? Um, and those optical scan machines are what does the counting in Illinois. Now, I don't know the specifics about hand counting or if there's a recount of some kind, but when, at least in my county, when you go vote, you get your paper ballot, you get the envelope, the little folder, you fill it out, and then you go and you feed it into a machine, and that machine is what actually counts the ballots. So it's optical scan in Illinois, but there's a paper trail in these actual ballots. And whether or not hand counting can be done, I'm going to take this uh, county clerk's word for it that uh, hand counting, random hand counting, not necessarily uh, what's what's done in the state of Illinois. A little bit more about all of this, though. Continuing on from last week's final ranked choice voting task force, uh, you had proponents there. Uh, Patrick Hanley was from Fair Vote Illinois, and he was questioned by board member John Fogarty about just the overall acceptance of ranked choice voting. Fringe thinking about, uh, you know, what if there were three candidates in, in the race? And uh, we wouldn't well, know. Well, he's talking about the uh, Cook County State's Attorney's race, which, by the way, Friday, Eileen Burke declaring victory in that. She'll face the Republican in Cook County State's Attorney's race, Bob Fioretti. Hope to have Bob Fioretti on here soon to talk about what he would bring to the table. But regardless, uh, they were talking a lot last week about the Cook County State's no, Attorney's race. Anything until 14 days after Election Day and then go through all those those machinations. Um, you know, I, I think that could quite dispirit the voting public. And uh, those machinations he's talking about is, if your number one ranked candidate doesn't get the uh, support, your, the support from your number two candidate gets that support. And then they start, you know, calculating all the number two candidates and moving those votes around and say number two didn't get the support of number three, and then they move the number three candidate's support up to number two and, Okay, I'm just, I guess I have to have a flow chart to see how this works. Uh, but regardless, uh, the Fair Vote supporters, uh, Fair Vote Illinois, uh, they support ranked choice voting. Uh, Patrick uh, Hanley says, hey, just, people will get used to it. Uh, I think people are going to get used to it. Uh, certainly, I think people, now that they've done mail-in balloting for, for some years, really like it. But that's that's separate from this hearing, so... Well, but mail-in balloting also being criticized uh, in, in various circles. I think even Elon Musk, love him or hate him, um, he shared a, uh, a graphic showing all of these different countries that banned mail-in voting because of fraud uh, and uh, the concerns raised about, around mail-in voting. But regardless, I guess that's another conversation for another day. State Representative Cam Buckner, Chicago Democrat, was in the um, task force uh, last week uh, talking about why he supports this effort to have the ranked choice voting system implemented statewide for the 2028 presidential primary. We need uniform standards across the state. Uh, RCV will necessitate that we do the necessary work to standardize our election processes and ensure that the voting experience is the same across counties so that we minimize variation between red and blue counties. This puts democracy back in the hands of the people and does not subject it to the will and the whims of rogue clerks. RCV will also help us modernize our elections. We should be using modern election machines and software. And right now there are still uh, counties in Illinois who are using paper ballots. Uh, and, and I think we really need to move past that. Again, uh, 
uh, some words matter, I guess, uh, and and just so we understand, uh, you know, paper ballots. Uh, moving past paper ballots, some people have a real reluctance of that idea. John Ackerman being one of them, and here's why. That provides you the ability to audit the election independent of the machines and make sure that the uh, the public can see the, the difference there. So all uh, jurisdictions throughout the state of Illinois utilize paper ballots. Now, And uh, he continued on with uh, other issues he wanted to make sure people in the task force clearly understood about uh, the state's paper ballots, about the state's diverse and decentralized election process. Illinois' diversity, having it at a local level controlled rather than from one uniform system from the state down actually provides safety and security to our election process that doesn't exist in other states by having 109 different jurisdictions in the state of illinois utilizing the same procedures and policies but utilizing different equipment it makes it impossible to penetrate our systems in one location and gain access to everything you would have to hack the elections in 109 different jurisdictions in order to successfully attack the Illinois election process. Um, so our diversity, we've heard from the feds, is actually our greatest strength. And having that decentralized where you have 102 county clerks in control of 102 county elections with individual county clerks compiling their totals for a statewide race and then getting those totals eventually to be certified by the state board of elections that's the current process very decentralized what this ranked choice voting would do is it would essentially require decentralization of our votes to where the what state board of elections is the one that ultimately is gonna be the one compiling all these votes from 102 different jurisdictions, 100 and I guess nine different jurisdictions if you count some of the other uh, independent uh, uh, jurisdictions for voting. Uh, but Abigail Drum, uh, she was responding to critics who say we're not going to have results, uh, definitive results for possibly two or three weeks as they have to wait two weeks for the mail-in ballots to come in instead of in some states that uh, others on the task force uh, noted they require their mail-in ballots to be mailed in by election day they don't give this two-week grace period it's if your ballot's not in by mail by election day it's not going to be counted maybe that's something that uh, some people in the uh, elections committees can can look at i don't know if that's the case because they're wanting to expand mail-in voting even more in illinois at least the democrat majority seems to uh, uh interested in that uh but regardless uh, if ranked choice voting's brought into the mix is that going to confuse things even more well abigail drum an advocate for ranked choice voting seems frustrated by that question it's the exact same thing as doing what we do now because they are unofficial results and yeah, that may change as you get more ballots in, but that's how elections work right now. As you get more ballots in, the result may change. Like somebody mentioned earlier, we still don't know who won the Democratic primary and the Cook County State's attorney. We do now, after somebody uh, announced that they declared victory and had enough vote margin to make that happen, but regardless. Because we're waiting for more ballots. So that is like it's the exact same thing you just there's no reason you have to wait for everything to come in doing that is the equivalent of if we waited for everything to come in right now before we gave any results and i don't know if that would be very helpful right especially if you have to wait that two week period uh, and i think a lot of people especially after looking at the cook county race frustrated by it's taking more than a week it's it's taking more than election night to count these ballots and then when they learn they have up to two weeks to take in more ballots. There's a federal lawsuit underway right now in the Seventh Circuit that actually deals with, um, I think a Judicial Watch has it against the state of Illinois for having federal elections go beyond election day, uh, saying that this is 40 days of elections uh, is, is not proper for federal elections. Anyways, that's a different conversation for a different day. But John Ackerman uh, really just making sure that he's clear on his uh, criticism of ranked choice voting. We hear enough already when the vote count changes drastically as new votes are counted. I can only imagine as we're saying that candidates aren't in there anymore, that they are in there, that would cause vast confusion throughout the state. You do have to wait until all the ballots are collected before you start running any of these 
uh, uh, rounds of ranked choice voting um, and, and getting that information from 109 different jurisdictions to Springfield, where it would all be added in and, and start being computed, which is the model in Alaska and in Maine, would be an all new uh, mold of operations, all new employees, all new staffing um, that that is a dollar amount that we haven't even addressed yet when looking already at how much this new rollout would cost. So think about that. We don't know how much this even costs yet, but they're getting ready to put together a final report. So this is from the final ranked choice election and election systems task force for Illinois last week. And they're going to be meeting in uh, about seven days from now to finalize that report. Uh, is that report already written? They're going to be offered up a draft report for the General Assembly, but people are like, what do you mean you're going to offer up a draft report? We haven't even voted on anything yet. Why would it be written in one direction if we, as a group, vote to completely rewrite it and change it into a different one? Is that something that you're looking at is for us to hold a vote here today on what direction that report? No, I think you're making an assumption that's not there. We have to start with something. So there'll be a draft and at that point in time, we can go either way with the draft. As I said, the draft would, would compile all of the minutes from the testimonies that we had had. And that's what will be compiled in the draft. So it, it's not anything that people are not aware of. It's not making any assumptions. Um, and I think we should all start with that mindset going in to the next meeting. Show they've got another meeting where they're going to finalize a report, vote on it, get that to the Illinois General Assembly with the eyeball of looking at the 2028 presidential primary election to bring about ranked choice voting. There are actually some states across the country that are banning ranked choice voting. In Illinois, looking at expanding the voting to include ranked choice voting for a presidential primary. Pretty fascinating stuff. Again, something I think that we have to continue to track. So like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for taking time with me here with Bishop on Air. Appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll see you sooner than later here with Bishop on Air.